it's December, which means it's time for Christmas Lazy Game Reviews. Now, before we get to the main Christmas game topic, we have to take a look at a weird little piece of software called NFK Natural Fun Killers. Released in 1999, it was a project by a couple guys at Fiendish Games, then a subsidiary of Criterion Software, and was supposedly a spoof of the various hunting games of the time. I say supposedly because it just kind of took the idea of hunting and said, screw it, hunting's lame and difficult. Here, have a bunch of ridiculous weapons and absurdly slow creatures to slaughter instead. Check my video on YouTube about that game for more info, but suffice it to say, it wasn't exactly a stroke of genius, and Fiendish Games was shut down by Criterion the following year. Nevertheless, a new company called Small Rockets was formed from the corpse of Fiendish Games, the rights to NFK were licensed from Criterion, and somewhere along the line, another NFK game was released, Santa's Gone Postal. This is the game we're looking at here, and this time around, the psychotic hunter Harry from the first game has donned a Santa suit and has decided to go postal on more cute critters. Whatever the reason for that may be, it doesn't matter, and the game knows it doesn't matter because once you start the game, you're dropped directly into the world, sniper rifle in hand. Just like the original NFK, the goal here is to shoot anything that moves, collect enough carcasses and bloody chunks, and do so before the time runs out. That's it. I got something! You'll come across rabbits, reindeer, elves, and bears that look like walking poop. But the only real difference between any of them is that some of them are worth more points than others and will fill your sack more quickly. And yes, the creatures are meant to look cute, and you're meant to be a deranged, bloodthirsty hunter that takes pleasure in destroying animals, but that's not really offensive to me. It's a dumb and immature game, who cares? What is offensive to me is the crappy gameplay. For one thing, the animal AI is about as dumb as it gets. There's supposed to be a system that has them smelling you downwind, and you have some animal calls to use, but it's completely pointless to worry about this stuff at all. They spawn. You shoot them, there you go. They might run away, but they're so slow and mindless, it doesn't matter. The only real problem are bears that can attack you, but all you have to do is run backwards, shooting constantly, since you run backwards at the same speed that they run forwards. There is absolutely no challenge to this game whatsoever. Well, actually, that's not quite the truth because of the stupid freaking pointless timer. Every level has a certain time limit, and if you take too long, you have to restart the level empty-handed. And since the animals spawn somewhat randomly, it's quite possible to not be able to finish a level since you just ran out of time before you harvested enough body parts. This is made even worse by the level design, which is just short of absolutely horrendous. Obvious to anyone with any sense of taste, most of the levels are but ugly. Each level is actually designed using 128 by 128 pixel bitmaps which work as a height map, with a set of simple low-res textures and low-poly objects placed on yet another 128 by 128 bitmap. The advantage of this is that making levels is incredibly easy. I mean, you can do it in MS Paint. The disadvantage is they look like garbage and are filled with all sorts of nightmarish angles and textures. The fact that you can't jump and it's impossible to walk up a slope if it's angled just a single degree too much just makes it even worse. And even though most of the levels are just giant bowls with an open area full of random crap in the middle, there are some that require navigating hills and mountains, and even one with a freaking maze mimicking the hedge maze from The Shining. So again, the only challenge is finding the animals before the time runs out, because if you find them, they're yours. Admittedly, there is some fun to be had with the game's four weapons. Popping the tiny heads off of bunnies with the sniper rifle is enjoyable. Well, I mean, it is for the first few times you do it, at least. Tearing into a polar bear with the minigun is kind of fun, though it has to be the single weakest sounding minigun I have ever heard. I've heard pairs of scissors that sound more menacing than this thing. Huh, you know.
Their rocket launcher is pretty neat, though it's slow and irritating to have to bring up the sight and aim before you can shoot anything. It just feels clunky. Easily the best weapon of the game, though, is the grenade launcher, which is not only powerful, but relatively fast to shoot and can be used without aiming down a sight. Also, most of the terrain deforms when using explosives, which is a pretty awesome touch. It makes sense that this is possible due to the levels being simple height maps, and is somewhat reminiscent of what you could do in the first Red Faction. Unfortunately, like everything else in the game, it's only a fleeting bit of fun before the boredom sets in again, and when you're bored but stuck playing something for a review, you start to get annoyed at every little thing. <laughs> like the guy you play as, Harry. I mean, what a douche. Not so tough now, are you? Why would you ever expect bunnies with silly hats to be tough to begin with? You're gonna get this one. Why even include a line like that? I can't even decipher what was meant to be said. Haha, <laughs> picking up the pieces. No, you don't say. I thought you were building a house. You may as well state everything that you do. Looking at the trees. <laughs> Wishing my gun had reloading animations. Walking towards nothing. A lot. Ah, well, there is one consolation. The game ends, <laughs> after ten levels, once you reach the North Pole and run into a friggin' massive hungry T-Rex with a Santa outfit on. Once you complete this level, it's game over. You see some credits and are unceremoniously kicked from the game back to the desktop. Fantastic. Uh, if even a giant dino Santa can't solve my problems with NFK and this Christmas edition, nothing can. The game is just not engaging, the hunting isn't challenging, the levels are annoying, the graphics are ugly, the speech is obnoxious, the Christmas theme is barely existent, and it's over in about an hour. You know, actually, I, I take that back. The last one regarding game length is a blessing in disguise. In fact, the game is about an hour too long. I admit the novelty of shooting crap out of cutesy things is initially kind of appealing to my inner 12-year-old. Deforming the terrain is cool, if a bit useless, and you probably could have fooled yourself into thinking it was fun back in the day if you didn't have any other games. But even with those almost positive things, I just I can't recommend this one at all. I've honestly had more fun correcting the spelling in this review script than I had playing the game. And I generally love first-person shooters from this time period, but this one? Uh, no. So unless you're just morbidly curious to experience it for yourself, I would leave this one to rot in Christmas PC gaming past. Uh.